Hello and welcome to another tutorial. Today we will ask ourselves 10 questions we need to answer before we can actually start and attack our game project. This will be step number zero in a tutorial series in which we will create a whole PS1 style game from scratch. Every single part will build up upon it and stuff. It's going to be a very interesting experiment and uh, process for you and me. And yeah, and I hope you, you will get something out of it along the way. Let's get straight into it. So I created myself um, 10 questions. They will provide us with necessary informations for ourselves, for our project, to, to, to attack the whole project with a certain amount of motivation or direction. So let's go very quickly through those 10 questions and afterwards I will answer every one of them uh, for my game project for this tutorial series. So the first question, what is the genre and feel of the whole game project? Is it a character, world or event based story? What are the must haves? What is the unique selling point of my game? Where does the game take place? What is the perspective of the story? The main character and why is he in the story? The gameplay movement, so third, first person, third person, top down and so on. Our limitations for the project, time, budget, gear, platform. Do we wanna produce something for mobile or VR or are we going to um, make the game for PC, but we want to have the, the, the option open to port it later on to a handheld or a, into a VR game. And the last step is our to-do list. What are the topics we have to uh, cover or um, certain checkpoints along the way to our finished project and the most into uh, important thing for us in the tenth uh, in the last question is what is the next or in this case our first step we have to do to um, get the the thing going on, uh, going and the ball rolling <laughs> okay let's uh, let's let's answer those questions for ourselves for our case so what is the genre and feel for the, the game for this tutorial series? I want a horror horror game. The genre is horror and I would love to have some mystery elements, mystery mystery uh, elements uh, I want the, the player to have something to explore and stuff and maybe a bit weird and funny uh, because I want some elements the the people to talk about it shouldn't be that generic oh zombie apocalypse blah 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 okay so is it a character world or event based story this is a very important question this if we answer ourselves this question, we will be rewarded with a lot of answers for future questions along the, the process. So um, let me explain this. So um, these are the three archetypes of storytelling. A story can be a character based story, a world based story or a event or situation based story. Let me explain. A story which is centered uh, around a character and we see through him and everything ends with him. We have here for example the Batman, the TV show Supernatural, Doctor Who, the game God of War, Legend of Zelda. 
So basically the, the, the world and the situation doesn't matter we put in our character, it will be always centered around our character. We have here a thought experiment. Batman could be in space in a murder mystery. Because we have a character based story, this makes totally stands storytelling wise. Or here for Kratos, um, this is a very good um, example. Uh, Kratos was originally based in the Greek mythology, is now in uh, Nordic uh, mythology, and we could basically just take Kratos from God of War and could go with him to Japan and fight in a battle royale situation. Uh, against the mythology of Japanese mythology. <laughs> okay, here are the next point, the world-based storytelling. Uh, the story is centered around the world. We see every event and the characters inside is nothing ends. Everything continues after the end of a character or a event or a situation. For example, we have here Lord of the Rings, Silent Hill, Resident Evil, The Walking Dead, Animal Crossing, Fortnite and so on. So let's go to our thought experiment. In Silent Hill could be a field trip um, with a school class full of children and in the middle of Silent Hill could be a tsunami. And storytelling wise this would make totally sense uh, because we kept everything inside our parameter for a world-based storytelling. And the last one, the event or situation-based storytelling is the story centered around an event. We see everything in it, no matter the character or the world, everything ends with the event itself. So for example, we have here The Purge, the very recent movie Bullet Train, Godzilla, Alien, uh, the Suicide Squad. So, no matter the character, no matter the world, the Xenomorph from Alien could hunt at an anonymous alcoholics meeting in a church in the 50s. Storytelling wise, this makes totally sense. I definitely see myself here more in uh, a world building based story, so I don't give a fuck about the main character. I don't give a fuck about the situation. I only I would love to maybe do some plot twist situation where the main character dies and the game switches perspective or something. You could only do that in a world or event based situation. Uh, so world based situations like Silent Hill and Resident Evil, I see myself inside here. And if you think about it, um, Five Nights at Freddy's uh, Snaf is also a world-based story telling. It's not about uh, the events that happened in this uh, world. It's not about the... Yeah, it's about the characters, but not specific about one character. It's about multiple. So it's about the world itself. So it's a world-based. And I want that too for my game. So I have a world to build with the story and the narrative, so a world based story and I have to keep that in mind. So what are the must haves? I really like uh, liminal spaces, I love aquatic themes as you could see in the in my intro. Um, aquatic, I want a shark monster monster and yeah I mean we can change stuff around later on anyway what's the unique selling point of my game well it will take uh, place in a in a water park in an abundant water park so we have a lot of bright features and we can play around with aquatic themes limited spaces and the shark monster and maybe we can bring some funny and weird twists to it. Um, what's also a unique selling point of my game? I mean, I have a fucking shark monster. It's a summer horror. 
game. There are not a lot of uh, summer themed uh, horror games or games that fit into the, the summer narrative. So that's a thing. So this could be um, a perfect game for a summer sale or something. <laughs> okay, fifth question. Where does the game take place? Here again, we have the, the water park or abundant what is the perspective of the story i wanna um stick to the the the, the retro horror elements and i wanna tell the story through of course <laughs> not everything has to be unique and stuff uh anyway what What's the main character? The main character. So we have here the the the, the place is a abandoned water park, and we have a shark monster and shit. So it would make sense for the the main character we play in the story to be a reporter or something or or an urban explorer. Ben. Uh, and why is he in the story? Well, I think this is explaining itself, and and it would also make sense to to find video tapes or some weird YouTube videos of an urban explorer. So the gameplay and movement. This is uh, very important. Um, certain gameplay movement types are fitting better into an uh, into a narrative or into a situation it's way easier to create a scary atmosphere with a first person perspective uh, than a third person perspective because you have way more uh, range and you can look around corners inside a top down or third person perspective and in a first person pe perspective it's not that easy to to look around uh, a corner or something so you you have more potential for horror and atmosphere fps movement oh and and because it's taking place in a water park i want uh, and it's an urban explorer. I want some swimming parts. Swimming parts. Um, maybe climbing or something. Or not. I don't know. Uh, slides. So we have to keep those elements in mind. And now we come to the limitations. So, I mean, I, I have to do a lot of other, other things, <laughs> but uh, I, time, time is, is hard to tell, but I would say something like, let's say three, three months maximum. Max. Um, what is my budget? I don't want to spend too much. Actually, I don't want to spend anything. <laughs> so let's keep that open. Gear. Uh, I have a gaming PC and oh, platform. Very important. I want to make a PC game and it's going to be a PS1 style um, PS1 style game and I would love to uh, to make maybe port it uh, for VR so gaming PC I want to make it for PC and for VR so So for the last and 
very important question I made a to-do list I I was uh, going through the whole process and stuff so it's very easy um, get your goals uh, set your goals get your goals and basically you you start with the end result and go backwards through the stages of what you have to do and this is also a very flexible situation because you will add stuff and and change stuff along the way it's a process but the the important thing i want to have and get out of the to-do list is what i should do next so here is my um here is my to-do list for this tutorial series basically a concept and concept we just did it and reference scouting and the frame of our lore which basically we also just did but the next step will be uh, gathering references googling stuff how uh, water slides at night look like how abandoned water parks look like let's watch um, um youtube top 10 abundant theme park stuff and uh, making screenshots save pictures make a folder dedicated to references for this project and maybe let's write down a basic lore why a urban explorer would explore an abandoned water park and why would there be a shark monster so that's already a lot and the part after the reference scouting is already the main character and we will get straight up into modeling and stuff bingo bango bongo so reference scouting and main character will be the next steps in this tutorial series so, so I hope you got something out of this video. If you have any questions, leave them in the comments below. If you like this video, like and subscribe. And if you want to help the channel big time, consider becoming a Patreon like those lovely people. Um, I really hope uh, some of you maybe stick by to this tutorial series. This is a very important step. Um, we answered a lot of important questions for the the upcoming steps and yeah and i think this will take some interesting turns and will uh, go into very interesting directions so i hope you're on board and bye <laughs>